This video is still about inflation rate and what inflation does to our money. Nominal versus the true purchasing power of money. Example 2.24 Nominal versus true purchasing power of savings. We are given two bundles of 1 million pesos, which we shall park in two schemes for a period of five years. In our plan A, all we have to do is put our money in a safe deposit inside our house. Just keep it there and lock it for five years. Plan B, put it in a fund managed by a bank where the interest rate is 1.125% a year. This is the prevailing time deposit rate that I found in the website of BDO. So let us compare the two. What is the purchasing power of 1 million in a cash vault after 5 years given that the average inflation rate is 3%? So the effect of inflation rate is to reduce the value of our money. So which is why this is our uh, generating function or formula to produce the future value of 1 million pesos. Now if you were to look at this, this is an exponential function. This is an exponential function and its base is less than, less than 1 but greater than 0. So this means our exponential function that computes for the future value of an investment given the fact that we have an inflation rate of 3% is a decreasing function. Our function is decreasing. So the effect of 1 minus R is to reduce the value of our 1 million pesos. What's, so what's going to happen in the period of 5 years? So 1 million today will have been 970,000 only by next year. It lost 30,000 pesos in purchasing power. In 2022, it will be further reduced to 940,900 pesos. And by 2025, after five years, when you open the, the cash vault, it's still 1 million. But its true purchasing power has been significantly reduced to 858,734. When you use your 1 million pesos in 2025, it can no longer buy you the goods and services that it can buy in year 2020. Because the purchasing power of that 1 million has been reduced to 858,734. What is the accumulated value of the fund after 5 years at a time deposit rate of 1.125? So this is the other bundle of 1 million pesos which we deposited in a fund to be managed by BDO for example. And it will earn an interest at a rate of 1.125%. So what's going to be the future value of that 1 million pesos? So we will use this. So on paper, on paper, the interest rate will add value to your 1 million pesos. So let's see what's going to happen to the future value of 1 million pesos. So after 5 years, your 1 million pesos will have become 1,064,082. Example 2.24 Nominal versus true purchasing value of your savings deposit. What is the true purchasing power of the money deposited in the fund, the money that we put in a, in a, in a bank to be managed by a bank, given that inflation rate reduces its true value? So we have two rates here. The one rate comes from the bank, R sub B, it adds value to your money. But we have the inflation rate, the phenomenon of inflation rate, which removes value from your money. So the true 
rate of increase in value of your money is going to be the interest rate given by the bank minus the inflation rate. And so the true value of R, the rate of change in the value of your money that is deposited in a bank is actually negative 0 0.01875. So it's negative. So our R sub T here is the true a rate of increase in the value of our money when you put it in a bank, it is still negative. So if we were now to compute for the true purchasing power of the money deposited in a bank, your one million pesos, your one million pesos after five years will will have been reduced to nine hundred nine thousand seven hundred pesos. So it lost something like 90,000 in purchasing power even when you deposited it in a bank. So your 1 million pesos lost almost like 90,000 pesos in purchasing power even though it's there in the bank and earning interest. And that is because of the phenomenon of inflation rate. Well, at least putting it in a bank is better than simply putting it in a cash vault. Because if you were to put it in a cash vault, your money would have lost something like 150,000 pesos in purchasing power. At least when you put it in a bank, it's only 90,000 pesos in purchasing power. You know what? When I wrote my book, these were the prevailing uh, rates of interest in time deposits. 3%, 1.75%, 1.25%, and the average inflation rate is between between 2 and 3%. So many years ago, I had the feeling, I had this notion that even when you put your money in a bank, in the long run, it will still lose its purchasing power because of inflation rate. Because at that time, I thought that no banks would give a rate of interest that is larger than 3%. At the time, this was something like two years ago. But I was wrong. I was wrong because I discovered that there are, in fact, banks in our country that gives more than 3% interest rate to a time deposit. Look at this one. For a, for a minimum deposit of 100,000 pesos, Security Bank will give you uh, an interest rate of 3.9%. That's way above the inflation rate. Our inflation rate is just between uh, 2.3 and, and 3%. Let's put that at 2.6%. And look at 1 million pesos. So Security Bank will award an interest rate of 4.1% to a deposit of 1 million pesos. So when we are looking for an interest rate, we must look for an interest rate that is greater than the prevailing inflation rate. So these are the top five banks or the best banks for a time deposit account. These are the five banks. But I have one more final word to say on time deposits. Interest earned from time deposits is subject to a withholding tax of 20%. So let's say, for example, you have 1 million pesos. You put it in security bank in a time deposit account that will award you with 4.1% interest rate. So after one year, you will earn an interest of 41,000 pesos. So if, if you want to get back your all of your money, it's going to be 1 million and 41,000 pesos. But... This 41,000 pesos is subject to a withholding tax of 20%. Now, you will not receive the full sum of 41,000 pesos. You will only receive 80% of 41,000 pesos because of a withholding tax of 20%. So instead of 41,000 pesos, your net interest is 32,800 pesos.